We are pleased to welcome, once again, Jody O'Donnell Ames, the founder and president of an organization called Hope Loves Company. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, too. We met each other at a great event. Describe the uh, Rustbury Awards for making a difference. It's incredible. Uh, Angelica, what Angelica and Angelica Russ, Berry, yeah. right, have, and the late Russ have, Berry. have created is um, such a tribute and such an honor to be a part of that. Uh, the day, as you well know, is about celebrating people doing good things and right. inspiring, really. Um, Unsung heroes. You have, a, you have a hard job because you have to continuously say, what you do is amazing. Well, no, I, I <laughs> we should tell folks that I host, I've, host, I've been proud to host, uh, humbled to host the event since its inception. Um, and I've met so many incredible people like yourself. You were one of the $5,000 prize Correct. winners. Describe Hope Loves Company. The story behind it. Hope Lost Company is a journey. Uh, basically, in 2000, no, I'm sorry, in 1995, uh, when I was 29 years old, my husband was um, diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. And to be honest, I didn't know much about it. We had a toddler at home, and basically, we were told that, and the way I look at it is, our lives were cut short because my dreams were with my husband and my child and thinking about having another child sure. and um, in our lives ahead of us. And you know, at that moment, it was at the University of Pennsylvania. Now what? Now what do we do? So Hope Love's company um, started when he passed in 2001. And I started to think about children who have loved ones living with ALS and the journey they go on and how many of them are caregivers. And how their well, lives, saw their lives change. You saw I saw what happened daughter. to my daughter. Right. Um, my husband, at the time of his passing, was he was ventilated. He had a feeding tube. He was speechless. He was paralyzed. And um, our daughter was two and a half to eight years old during that time. And I recognized the things that she said to me, um, such as, well, all of the other dads. But I also recognized that she had an understanding a level of understanding about life and about compassion that mm. maybe another eight or nine year old would not have had. But a profound impact. A profound impact. You remarried. I did remarry. So I started working as a director of communications in Philadelphia. You have a great memory. Um, and um, my husband delivered a book called What Did You Learn Today? He was not my husband at the time. Right. But I was working with children and he brought his late wife's book who had written it for her two children. She had died of ALS. So the gentleman you married? Yes, Warren Ames. Lost his wife to ALS. He did. In six months, I had six years. They had six months, two days before Christmas, two little children. And you know, Steve, what she said when she received her di diagnosis was, who will raise my children? That was all she cared about. And mm. it's hard for me to even say that now as a mother of three children. Um, and I think that whole experience of now raising three children, mm. who all lost a parent to ALS before the age of 11, opened my eyes to not only the challenges that they go through, but the way that we can encourage survival and create even stronger adults. What do they need? And your organization help them wow. help provide for them. They need um, they need to be first of all recognized. They need they need our society to recognize that there are children who are who are loving someone with ALS every day instead of you know having the possibility of getting better. These people are battling new and new and unknown um, challenges. So maybe today you can lift a fork. Maybe tomorrow you need to be fed. Maybe um, you, know, you can have a conversation. And then maybe you're vented and you rely on a Toby to speak. A what? A Toby, which is a, um, it's a computer-based. Right. Steve Gleason uses it. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so um, you, know, you would use your computer to communicate with your six-year-old son. And Steve Gleason just had another baby, so I'm sure that his daughter will be raised to hear that voice through that um, technology. And so our children, 
some of them are, you know, they have, you know, today's kids, right? They have, they're doing everything that they do. Your kids have homework, you know, yep. they have school events, then they come home. And I know a child right now who's, who's not doing well in school, even though he's so brilliant, because he Does comes he home and he's caregiving. Does he have a parent His who's dad with lives ALS? with ALS. And, you know, if How if do you help a child like that? Because I know you have camps. So we have free camps across the nation. And we get, that, that's the first and foremost, because many children have never met another child who's in their situation. So if they can come to camp and feel, quote unquote, normal for a weekend, and make new friends, right. and make um, new contacts that they can reach out to and have that support system. Also learning coping skills while at camp. By the way, so, you have, you're in five states, 18 camps? We have, we're in five states, and as of today, we're making an announcement we are adding a Chicago camp. Oh, is that right? With the Les Turner Foundation, yeah. So we're- so much, <laughs> A lot of it is fundraising, isn't it? It's, all, it's a lot of, of fundraising, grant writing, really, more than anything, to. Uh, to, to get and partnerships to get our camps out. But camp is just the beginning, and then what we, our ongoing goal is to really start talking about how to support children. Because there's anticipatory grief, there's, there's grief in general, there's trauma, you know, there's um, anxiety, there's depression. And, um, and I think this is across a lot of diseases. So I'm not just specifically saying this is for ALS, but for children, caregivers, and children who are in the capacity of providing on a mm -hmm. daily basis um, help, assistance. Dirty, in a few seconds left, why do you call these children unsung heroes? Before I let you out of here, you call them unsung heroes. Why do I call them yeah, that? Yeah, why are they unsung heroes? Well, um, because you know they teach me so much. They teach me every day. Um, you know, I might have a, be having a bad day. I've been doing this for a while. Sometimes I get tired and grumpy. And then I see a six-year-old who is, um, you know, providing care, maybe helping feed a, a, a dad. Or, or I see right now there are... A few seconds. Go ahead. There are a few children in, um, in Yardley. Dad's getting tricked, and, and they're all picking up and helping each other get to school. And, you know, mom's at the hospital. And I see these children who are doing something... Um, incredible, and, and they are heroes. And no one's no, no one's really celebrating them, well, but we are. We're, we're we are for sure. We're trying to recognize them, <laughs> and and we admire and respect the work that you are doing, and also everyone else who's been recognized by the the very foundation, uh, and the awards for making a difference. It was a really good choice with you and oh. everyone else. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me. Check you out next I'm time. I'm so Thank grateful. You. Thank we're you. We're grateful. <laughs> The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Summit Medical Group, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, St. Joseph's Health, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, New Jersey Resources, and by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.